If you grow flowers for cutting, whether it be on a small back garden scale or as a flower farmer, then after months of nurturing your plants from seed to flower, you want to make sure that they're going to last as long as possible in the vase. In this video, I've compiled seven years of flower growing experience along with scientific research to give you the information needed to make sure your cut flowers last as long as possible in the vase. When plants produce flowers, they are doing so to produce seeds for the next generation. Flowering is often at the end point of a plant life especially if it's an annual when we cut a flower we remove it from its water source and it begins to die there are several factors that speed up and slow down plant death and we want to concentrate on the ones that we can influence plants are able to take up water from the soil below through processes that alter the pressure potential of the water Plants transpire through the plant leaves and that creates a negative pressure gradient between the top of the plant and the roots which draws water up through the xylem because of the cohesive forces of water. Once cut we want our flower stems to continue to take up water for as long as possible. Changes in water pressure due to blockages in the stem, changes in pH and dissolved substances within the water can mean that water moves out of the cells in the cut stem and that causes the plant to wilt and die. Inevitably our cut flowers aren't going to last forever but there are a few things that we can do to try and make vase life as long as possible. Those things include the stage of harvest, post harvest treatment, water quality and environmental temperature. I'm going to cover how we can optimise all of these conditions for a long vase life. It's worth noting that there are so many variables affecting vase life and it varies from species to species. It's worth doing vase life tests with different conditions to find out what works best for you and also researching specific species if you're having trouble with vase life or cutting and conditioning. Cutting flowers at times when transpiration is at its lowest point is ideal and that includes the early evening and the early morning. That is usually when the temperature is at its lowest. Sometimes wind dies down at that time of night, not at the moment unfortunately and also the sun isn't shining as bright so we don't get as much transpiration from those leaves. Picking in the middle of the day obviously isn't a good idea because we usually have higher temperatures and more sunlight during the middle of the day. Between the morning and the evening, the morning is probably the better time to pick because the plant's core temperature is at its lowest. The core temperature of plants is really important for vase life and post-harvest conditioning. Flowers with a lower core temperature will last longer in the vase. The plants will also have lots more water contained within the cells as they've been taking up water during the night. They won't have been losing water through transpiration for very long in the morning. Although cutting in the morning is preferable, cutting in the afternoon can also have its benefits. Because the plant has been photosynthesizing all day, the plant cells are full of sugars um, that they've been producing through photosynthesis and those sugars will help to keep the plant metabolizing and living for longer. However, the core temperature of the plant is going to be higher, which will be as at a detriment to the vase life of the flower. And what we can do is we can practice something called pulse conditioning. We would put the flowers into tepid water about 32 degrees Celsius for about an hour and then we would transfer them into really cool water about four degrees Celsius to allow them to finish conditioning. So the way this works is that the initial period of warm water allows the processes to speed up a little bit so the, the water enters the stems quite quickly and then we cool them right down to reduce transpiration and re reduce the core temperature of the plants and that should hopefully help them to last a nice long time. Obviously this method of conditioning the flowers isn't ideal because there is a bit more labour involved and not everybody has access to temperature cooled water. I know that in the US lots more people seem to have um, a cooler available. That isn't something that we typically have here in the UK in the cut flower industry, um, not that I know of anyway. So what I tend to do is pick flowers early in the morning or late and in the evening into nice cool water and then I put them in a dark cool shed to um, condition for a few hours. So that is the best that I'm able to provide for my flowers so that is what I am providing them with. When we're cutting our flowers we want to cut them with nice clean sharp secateurs. Crushing the stems may inhibit the ability of water to flow up into the stem so we want to make sure we're using nice clean sharp bypass secateurs. I'll put a link down to my favourite secateurs that are really cheap from Amazon in the description down below. 
when I'm cutting flowers I always cut and I put my bucket full of cool water in the shade so that even when the plants are standing out in the field they're always somewhat in the coolest place possible and they're not going to suffer from heat stress too much. I also try not to put too many flower stems into a bucket as this will increase the temperature in the bucket. What we'd like to do is have not lots of nice space in between all of the stems with the cool water in between and the water being nice and deep as well to help us to reduce the temperature of the stems so that our flowers will last longer in the vase. The next important tip to making sure that your flowers last a long time in the vase is to cut them at the right stage and this can feel like a little bit of a minefield because it seems like all flowers need a different stage to harvest but it is quite simple really and I'm going to kind of give a general overview and then at the end of this video I'm going to give three species specific examples of flowers that I like to cut here on my flower farm with the correct harvesting stage and conditioning of those specific flowers. Once flowers have been pollinated then the plant moves its energy expenditure onto a different process so instead of producing those attractive uh, flowers that are going to attract the pollinators to pollinate it they're going to start putting their energy into seed production for the next generation therefore in the next couple of days after pollination the petals are likely to fall off so what we want to do is pick flowers that haven't been pollinated just yet and those flowers will typically last longer in the vase. Spike flowers like snapdragons, larkspur etc typically want to be picked when a third to half of the flowers are open on the stem. Flowers like cosmos want to be picked when the petals start to pull away and open up and you want those to be kind of cracking open to all the way to halfway open and you want to keep an eye out for the pollen in the center of the flower and you want to be picking it before it gets pollinated. Other flowers like Achillea need to be fully open before you pick them otherwise they will wilt and they won't last very long in the vase at all. When cutting the stems we want to cut them on a 45 degree angle to prevent any blockages going into the xylem and to allow water flow up into the stem. If the stems are sitting flat on the bottom of the vase it might prevent water from going up into the xylem. I just want to take a moment to introduce you to today's video sponsor Proven. Proven is really unique in that it provides you with really personalised skincare products based upon 47 different factors including your age, what your skin concerns are and also they go into crazy detail about where you live so you input your postcode and it will tell you what the UV exposure is like in your area, what the water hardness is and it will combine your skin concerns with those local environmental factors and produce for you something that is tailored specifically for you. How cool is that? What I really like about this is they've just provided me with three really simple and easy to use products I don't have a myriad of different kind of products to choose from it's just a, a cleanser a day moisturizer and a night moisturizer and I really don't need it to be any more complicated than that you guys know that being outside on the farm in the sun all day and sometimes doing really dirty jobs can't be the best for my skin and I do occasionally get breakouts and I am kind of concerned about the fine lines and wrinkles that I'm going to get as a result of being out in the sun all of the time. Since I've been using Proven I haven't had any breakouts on my skin and it's feeling really really nice and soft and I love using this day cream because it is a mineral based sunscreen it just works as a sunblock on my face and I know it's not going to harm the environment. After I've spent the day at work it feels really nice to come home get in the shower and wash off all of the day's muck and the cleanser just feels really nice and it's got all of those ingredients in to kind of detoxify my skin. Click the link in my description and use the code BLOOM99 in capitals to get your first personalised proven system for just $99. This offer is for a limited time only and represents 50% off the retail price. Thanks Proven for sponsoring this week's video. Let's get back to learning about how to condition our flowers for long vase life. Now on to conditioning. It's really important to condition flowers in the right way to prolong vase life. Putting flowers into cool water in a dark place is going to be the best place to condition them. I put mine in a cool barn that is kind of double insulated. It's a barn, it's a room within a barn, so it stays really nice and cool and dark in there 
and I make sure the buckets are filled up with nice cool deep water. Like I said earlier, I'm not overpacking my buckets with flowers. Typically, I like to condition my flowers in a cool dark room overnight. Um, and it's really amazing to see how the flowers perk up overnight. They kind of go in looking a little bit sad. And when you come back in in the morning, they're looking really kind of perky and bright. But the flowers typically want to be conditioned for a good few hours before you start doing any kind of arranging with them. The presence of bacteria in the water can block the xylem from being able to take water up. So we want to keep the water clean and remove any leafy material from below the water surface which would encourage bacterial growth in the water. I would encourage my customers that I sell my flowers to to keep their vases in a cool place where we're going to kind of slow down the bacterial growth because remember warm conditions encourage bacteria to grow faster. Lowering the pH of the water might also help to inhibit bacterial growth and has been shown to increase water uptake. I've always been an advocate for just putting fresh clean water into a vase, keeping the vase clean and snipping the stems every couple of days. But after doing some research in this video, I found that it really is beneficial to kind of put some additives in the water. We want to be putting things in that are going to be lowering the pH of the water and also adding a little bit of a food source for the, the cut flower stems. So if we're going to be lowering pH, we want to be using something like um, vinegar or lemon juice and we can put sugar in as well to give a bit of plant food. Sugar helps the plant to absorb water into the stem as studies have shown and also when I've kind of been googling what other people are using as plant food a lot of them typically contain bleach but I don't think it's really necessary to put bleach in if you are lowering the pH with a vinegar but like I said you can test out your own conditioning methods your own flower foods and see what lasts better for you. Many commercially produced flower foods contain heavy metals and some quite nasty chemicals that are going to kill bacteria and a kind of um, germicides. So if you can use something that's going to be safe for everyone in your household, then um, I think that's the better way to go. So plant stems will sometimes heal up at the base when you have had them in water for a few days. So you want to recut the stems every couple of days to make sure that the, the flow of water into the stems isn't being inhibited by any kind of bacterial growth or any kind of healing that's going on on the bottom of the stem. At the same time as cutting the stems I would usually just refresh the water to make sure it's looking nice and clean to make sure that the flowers are going to last as long as possible. Here are some variety specific techniques for cutting and conditioning achillea, snapdragons, zinnias and dahlias. Achillea needs to be fully open in order to prolong its life in the vase. If you pick it too early, it will wilt. The best time to pick it is when all of the flowers are fully open and you can see the pollen. Achillea can be cut right at the base of the stem and the foliage from the stem removed before placing in the water. Achillea can last 7-12 to 12 days in the vase. There is a simple trick to testing whether zinnias are ready to cut and this is known as the wiggle test. You might have already heard of it. If you lightly shake the stem just below the flower and the flower head wiggles indicating the weakness in the neck, then it is not ready to pick. If the stem stays rigid when you are shaking the stem, then it is ready for harvest. Zinnias can last up to seven days in the vase. Snapdragon should be harvested when between a third and half of the flowers are open on the stem. Cut low down into the plant and place it into water. Snapdragons are geotropic, which means they adjust their positioning according to gravity. Stems must be placed vertical in the bucket during conditioning, otherwise they bend to adjust their orientation. This position becomes fixed after a few hours. Sometimes it helps to wrap the stems in paper to make sure that they stay vertical. If not, you could use a bucket with a grid on it or just prop up your stems against something to keep them vertical. Unlike other flowers which are best picked when the colouring starts to show or the bud starts cracking open, dahlias must be picked when they are mostly open. Pick them between three quarters and fully open because the dahlias do not continue to open in the vase. If it's too late to pick, you will notice that the petals at the back of the flower are starting to reflex back and look a little bit papery or dried out. Dahlias will last around five days in the vase with pom-pom varieties lasting the longest due to their robust flower design. 
I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you did, I would love it if you left a comment, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I'm always publishing videos just like this one full of interesting information about flower growing. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.